Hello and welcome to Just Do It, a Dewey Brothers podcast. I'm Alex. I am Eric, and um, it's been a long hiatus, but but we're back. Well, we're still on still on hiatus. Um, this well, week, we are. Yeah, we're still we're still on the vacation oh. team for sure. Uh, one oh, more tough. week. This is our final vacation week. I think I think we're starting to we're starting to understand where we where we want to go, and by that I mean where we're moving our uh, office to. That's right. It took us a long time to figure out our new spiritual succession and find a new direction for our chakras. There's a lot of feng shui problems with the bonsai tree and the garden. Well, the problem is I had uh, actually raked all of the my little sand garden towards mm. the east, and that, that just wasn't great. And then I had to individually pick all of the grains of sand and polarize them and move them off to the west and that still just wasn't it but uh i think i've narrowed it down we're uh we're going north we're going north with that the bonsai right in the middle slightly off to the corner it's it's mm-hmm. going to be a beautiful beautiful uh feng shui up in our and another problem with our garden there eric was that the sand pit and the grass where the bonsai tree was needed ed- needed to be edged it did you finally got in and did that cleaned it up looks real nice i think that might have restored the balance eric uh, i think it's ready for a podcast tournament so to speak oh yeah our um japanese garden is definitely ready for some podcasting tournaments so we'll get back to your regularly scheduled programming next week with that, Eric, you know what we have on the special today? Um, I I heard that we have nothing planned, so we're going to have to phone up some uh, old friends and uh, check in and see what they're doing. That's right. We're going to call up two of our old pals who happen to be also on hiatus. They are in their summer altitude training camp. Yes, that's right. I'm talking about our boys Jefferson Steelflex and Dewdrop, some of the best hottest young actually i believe jefferson steel flex is an old man at this point but they're oh, he's still uh, good he's still good at 45 he's still at the top of his game top of his game we're talking to some professional skiers uh let's let's bring I'm him pretty sure he line. won the hiking climb didn't he um i believe that he won the, at 45 the youngest man uh, to ever win what was the uh <laughs> what was that downhill the uphill downhill yeah the uphill downhill Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, I, I do He's believe He's the youngest more. person to ever win the uphill downhill at 45. It's a miracle. All right, um, so Jefferson Steelflex, are you there? Hey, yeah, it's your boy, Jefferson Steelflex. What's up? Mmm, mmm, hitting the gym. Oh, you're, you're ripping the gym. Gotta, I, oh, yeah. love, I love to hear it. How, uh, how thick are the thighs right now? I, I've heard that it's bulking season. Oh, us? Pro ski racers like myself, Jefferson Steelflex, we consider bulking season all season. We're not in season. So I'm eating Annie's mac and cheese, and then I'm adding to it Kraft mac and cheese. And then I went down to the Trader Joe's, cleaned them out, got some Trader Joe's mac and cheese. I am trying to hit those weight goals, son. A man after my own heart. I know. Okay, so a little off uh, off the record, but it's still going in the podcast here. I don't want to, yep. you know, we we have a planned interview coming, but personal question. Do you ever find it hard to balance this sort of uh, beach bod, like, what, with bulking season? You know, like, skiers, they, they live backwards. It's, uh, you know, wherever you are, you might be in the Southern Hemisphere training or up here in the North, but uh, that beach bod, that sweet rocking chiseled bod I know you have under there, it's a... Uh, it's all obviously all covered up from all the bulking mass you're putting on, right? All right, that's totally true, bro chachos. I got to let you guys know that skiers have it hard. All summer long, they're bulking up and you don't want to you don't want to be that dehydrated, you know? Like looking great for the show, like your buddy Schwarzenegger. I mean, that's all. That's one thing, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when when you're bulking, I mean, you just you got to do it. Some people call it the dad bod, you know. I prefer to call it the the ski racing bod. And then in the winter, once you have all of those huge ripped muscles, I mean, you should see my thighs come September. The problem is, I I put them right in the speed suit. You know, they get right in the GS suit, smooths it all out. No one sees anything. It is the plight of the skier, my friend. That's that's fair. I mean. 
Wow, it's it's a miracle. It's a miracle that you're there. The only way to remedy this in my heart is to do more squats, which I do every day. I start my day. I wake up, I make my coffee, and I do 100 squats. I got a squat-powered yeah, coffee maker. That's pretty modest. Anyway, I heard um, Dewdrop was going to be in on this call. We were going to do some sort of hanging out. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get him in here right now. Just got a fiddle here and... Hey, what's up, guy? I'm like, uh, I'm Dude Drop, you know. I uh, I used to be called something else, but I forgot it. Uh, from all the hit in the park, you know, half pipe, pipe, other things. Oh, uh, you're doing altitude training too, Dude Drop. Gnarly, bruh. Yeah, I mean, but obviously I don't wear a helmet because helmets are, they're, l- let's be real, they don't look that cool. This just in, um, disclaimer, the Just Do It podcast fully supports helmets, and the um, viewpoints of its guests do not properly reflect the standpoints of the podcast. And, like, yeah, so I just, like, you know, I love looking steezy and hitting the rails, baby. Hitting some jumps, did a uh, nice little do-roll out on the trampoline last week. I'm, uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to make it big. Oh, bro, first of all, I gotta say, you gotta protect that brain body up there, okay, man? The brain is the second most important part of the body right after the thighs. That's why you gotta protect, there's like 15, 20 brain cells up there, man. It's, it's my, I always wear a helmet. I got. I wrap that noggin up nice and tight, dude, drop. Wait, wait, dude, you got double digit brain cells? What are oh, you, yeah. the next, like... Albert Einstein? Hot dang, dude. No, nah, dude, Albert Einstein wasn't even that smart. Dude, I'm the, like the next Will Ferrell. That dude is so cool. You've got to like watch his movies, bro. Wait, no, dude. I, I have that voice. You, you're you supposed to be the 45-year-old Jefferson <laughs> Steel Flex guy. I am Jefferson Steel Flex. That's why I'm all ready to go. Oh, the roid rage. I got you, bro. I got you, bro. He my Whoa, yeah, roids dude. are strictly prohibited. I am on growth hormone. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, dude, I tried growth hormone once. I was supposed to only be four feet tall when I came out of my mo- mother's womb back then. You know, I came out and I was like, oh, rad. I came out, did a sweet, sweet little 360. Everyone was like, this kid's going to be a sweet skier, but he's tiny. So then they put me on some HGH, and now I'm like a solid 5'2". So, yeah, I- I'm living a good life. Yeah, dude, that's like uh, pretty tall. I heard I heard that's like cycling height, bro. Uh, I actually uh, have a thing against cycling. I remember back when I was like 6, I uh, I was walking down the road. Actually, I was I was skiing down the road because I had already like mastered how to ski on things that weren't snow. And uh, this this biker came and he looked at me dead in the face and was like, "Dude, wear a helmet." And I was like, "No, bro, I hate helmets." But uh, what else did he say? Oh yeah, he also looked at me and he had this funny little accent thing. He was like, "Oh yeah, welcome to the Sweden." And I was like, "What? We're not in Sweden." We're in, like, Finland. And after that, I, I've always hated cyclists, you know? Oh, yeah, dude. Cycling, it's not as cool as hiking up mountains and skiing back down mountains. Which is uh, what I'm all about. Um, Alex, Alex, we gotta rile these two in, my friend. They are, <laughs> they're going off. Uh, do oh, we man, have any they really structure? are. <laughs> I've, I have no idea. Um, you wanna, you wanna patch back into those guys before they... Oh my, I think they just got into a fight. Holy crap. I, I, okay, let me unmute their mics real quick. Yo, bro, dude, I, I totally am such a better skier than you. Like, have you ever done a Dewey roll, bro? Dude, it doesn't matter if I've done a Dewey roll, dude. I'm the best skier on the mountain. The name's Jefferson Steelflex. How many of these uphill, downhill medals do I need? Ah, uh, man, that's that. I, it's true. It's true. The uphill, downhill is like, you know. It's pretty tight, but like, come on. You look at me. I'm I'm looking great with my nice little snuggie on, cause I only rep snuggies when I ski. Cause that's right, brand deal, baby. But like, so like, I got my snuggie, all right. And I I'm run down. I got my 
I got my dollar store headphones in because, you know, I'm only listening to the I'm listening to the Wiggle soundtrack. Cause that's what gets me hyped up, bro. So I'm coming down. I see that half pipe. All right. And I'm like, yo, I bet I'm going to hit 27 feet. And then I hit 28 feet. And I was like, I'm such a genius, bro. So, like, come on. I bet you haven't hit 28 feet off the half pipe first in first in two. And then like, but yeah, I, I gotta admit, uphill, downhill, I, I wish I could. I wish I could get that. But like, dude, 28 dude, feet on the half pipe. I bro. carried the whole half pipe, brother. Okay. I was coming down with so much speed that I just I hit one end and I just went all the way to the other side. Wait a That's minute. right. I was doing 75 miles an hour. Are you telling me your dad Jefferson Steel Flex, the one that single-handedly carried that sweet half pipe all the way up from the base lodge to Mid Mountain? That's right, man. That's this Dude. Steel Flex. You know what they say? The weight of the gold medal hangs heavy around your neck, bro. Wait, but I thought they didn't give gold medals in um what is it called? Uh, the uphill downhill. I, th I thought you just got a like firm handshake and a really sick cup. Uh, well, the gold cup really hangs heavy on the head of the shoulder guy. That's why I'm working out my shoulders, bro. This week is all shoulders. What's your hardcore workout for your summer training? I mean, so like my summer training is just a lot of trampoline stuff. You know, I hit a hit a few cliff jumps. You know, like uh, I I've actually been training with the uh, the Finland uh, diving team, I kind of showed them up. Uh, I've actually been the first person who ever dewy rolled off of a 20-foot platform dive. It was uh, no big deal. So I think Guinness is going to call me up real quick and uh, put me in their book, their book of awesome bros, because I also slugged an entire pint of Guinness in like two seconds, man. I'm living my best life. Oh, dude, that's pretty respectable. You see, I am the kind of guy who brews kombucha in his hybrid van, you know? So, not super big on the sponsy deals. Uh, I've actually heard of Steel Flex uh, kombucha. You know, it's uh, it's made by this one random guy. I think his name's, like, Jeff. Uh, was it Jeffer? Jeffer Daughter? Jeffer Daughter Steel Flex, you know, out of a van. Out of a hybrid van, he brews some kombucha. It's like the best stuff. It's full of all the all the macros, okay? You got you got protein powder in there. You got carbohydrate powder in there. I mean, I put all the powders in. And then I kombucha it, baby. All right, Alex. I just muted their mics again. These guys are absolutely right, wow. crazy. Okay. Um, how about we ask some questions of Dewdrop? I found a couple hot ones and then we'll uh we'll get these guys out of here. All right, I'll um I'll try and rile them back together. Did you drop? Are you on the line? What, dude? I'm not on the line. I'm down the line, bro. I'm always hitting the sickest, gnarliest jumps down line, bro. Like, so I bet I bet my boy, we're we're best buds now. Me and uh, Jefferson Steelflex, but like no big deal. Um, so he was uh he was telling me all about that fall line, and I was like. Yeah, bro. That's pretty gnarly, dude. Drop. So I got a couple questions for you. You down to uh, answer them? Uh, I mean, I might walk out if they personally offend me, but like, yeah, dude, I got you. All right. So, uh, my boy Peems Twelve is over here asking, what goggles and lenses do you rock for racing day and night? Okay. So if it's uh if it's the day, I actually just wear um my pit vipers. Uh, so they're just sunglasses basically, but they look totally rad. And, um, then at night, because, you know, it's dark, but what people don't like to think about, they're like, oh, go, like a lot of, I know, I've heard a lot of people are like, I love to take my just like clear lenses for like the nighttime, but like, nah, man, all the cameras at the podium and all the light, the big shiny artificial light, too much for me. I go actually a completely dark lens in that situation because I want everyone to know that I don't need to see to be able to do my tricks. So I actually spray paint my goggles with a nice thick dark black and then everyone's like, I, I don't think he can see. Like I remember this one janky reporter guy was like, and we got dewdrop up here. He's coming in and I was like, 
yo, bro. And so I was, I was also like hanging with like the craziest hangover because I woke up at like probably four in the afternoon, just started chugging some, uh, some brewskis, you know. And then so by the time the comp, the comp started at like nine, nine thirty, I was, I was already feeling a little hungover. And so I, I spray painted my goggles. Uh, I have the U.S. Ski Team goggles, those uh, red and, like, green oak. Yeah, they're ones. really nice. Yeah. I mean, they're all right, but so I spray painted them black, and I was like, I don't need to see. These bunch of posers out here think I need to see. And so, like, this jive uh, man, like, reporter dude was like, well, now this is interesting. And I was like, yeah, it is. And then, like, all the judges, out of just sheer respect, gave me, like, a perfect score. Um, I don't remember that run. I couldn't see it, so I just really felt it, and yeah, that's what I do. Oh, that's that's totally tight, man. I think I got one more here, which is from Stan Dupe, okay? Stan Dupe, Dewey, he wants to know, what edge angles do you grind for half pipe versus slope style? All right, so slope style is kind of interesting, because, like, you know, you got, you actually have, like, rails and jazz up in that, so I like to take my saxophone and I take my saxophone, play a sweet tune like and then like so I just play this sweet, sweet sax solo and then I uh, actually use that to grind down my edges because I, I mean, I don't want my edges to get caught on those rails, you know, I'm a big rail guy. Um, so I actually purposely dull them with my saxophone. Uh, I I start out. Do you like at, play some sort of flat notes or something in order to dull them out? Um, yeah. So I uh, no, 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 not flat notes. Uh, I'm a sharp guy because I'm really cool. But not, I don't like my ski sharp, you know. But like, I dress sharp. I always look the part. That's what I do. Oh, up in here, yeah. I think I might become a rapper in another life or something. But like, jazz. I love me some jazz. So I play my saxophone, and I start out with a bass angle of you know probably uh a one one you know nothing too crazy uh real real just like brick of an edge and then i uh i dull them down with my saxophone then hit the rails like crazy slope style though i like i like to also keep a one one but without the dull because i don't like when i'm coming off that jump trying to do a perfect dewey roll or like you know try and hit that uh triple cork back 10 I uh, obviously I'm, I'm I don't want anything go wrong so yeah I just I rock it I live my good life um this this person that's asking the question uh, I hope one day you can be as cool as me probably not though but um also you gotta remember like this is really important dins high as they can go you don't want the dins like I I pre right, I pre released cut, on jump someone cut this guy's mic yeah Alex I got it I got it he's out. <laughs> Um, so I, I have a few questions for, uh, Jefferson Steelflex. All right. Sounds good. Uh, how about we, uh, get him on the line here real quick. Hey, yo, what's up, man? I was just doing some more curls. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Big, uh, curls. big shoulder day. I, uh, that's hey, respect one's for that. Mm. So, um, I got a question here, Jefferson. Yeah. What's up? Hit me. This from, uh, Ice Coast Coach. So, he he's asking how sharp do you keep your race skis do you uh also do you get fresh tuned skis every day oh yeah every day you see just like hitting the gym it's got to be an everyday thing okay i first thing right after i make my coffee by doing squats oh yeah i heard i heard about your coffee powered uh grinder and roaster oh yeah totally tight so what i do is i grab my skis for the day and i just shave with them bro uh, that's how sharp I keep them. I sharpen them every morning, and then I shave with them. Keeps it nice and fresh. Or maybe if I'm feeling it, I just tune up the beard. You know, you got to have a nice beard. It makes the kombucha taste better. Oh, that's uh, that's really cool. Um, do you think that the beard helps with your uh, aerodynamics when you're skiing? Oh, yeah, undoubtedly. I went into uh, some scientist broskies, and uh -huh. they told me that it actually forms an aerodynamic barrier that spoils, causes good air in order to turn to bad air to make you go faster. And I'm all about going fast, okay? I need that 
the least amount of aerodynamic drag going up the hill because I just I hike so hard. And then on the way down, when you're cruising, every bit counts. That's why I am always wrapped in the fastest fabrics. Dude, I mean, talking about that, uh, GS suits. Uh, I know they're really popular everywhere. I mean, you need them. It's your speed suit. So uh, I think I've personally done this, but will you wear your GS suit out in public for fun? This was asked by UNH Buzzard, of course. Oh, of course, Mr. Uh, Buzzard. Yeah, I'm always wearing my speed suit. As a matter of fact, I just got done with my shopping. Uh, I bought 14 more pounds of protein powder. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I did that all in my GS suit in order to be fast in and out of the store. Oh, so it actually increases your speed in day-to-day -day life, too? Oh, yeah. And, ladies, I just want to let you guys know it stays on. The GS suit stays on. Makes you go way faster. I'm all about hitting those reps. That's, uh, that's interesting. Alex, we got to cut this guy. He's going off on weird, crazy tangents. He's getting weird. I mean, that dude is, he is, first of all, he is cut. Second of all, yeah, I don't know how much is upstairs. <laughs> I don't think there's much upstairs for either of these guys. Whew, well, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad the folks at home could look into a, what a, what a peak athlete does over his summer vacation. Well, summer workout, right? Summer training is really important. Uh, I mean, of course it is. So, um, I, I, I think it's time to wrap this up. Um, it appears that Dewdrop and Jefferson Steel Flex are lost in the sauce. Their computers have completely frozen up, uh, but they're still doing strange things on them. I have no idea. Well, uh, Dewdrop's computer is just a haze, I believe, actually. There's a, just a big cloud coming out of, on, on his camera, and I think Steel Flex is, is that more squats? Or is that a screensaver? I can't tell. It's, I, who knows, the, the combined brain power to uh, equivalent of a potato, but great hearing from them. They're, they're great at what they do. Um, I think it's time to wrap this up, Alex. All right. Uh, let's, yeah, let's thank our sponsors. The first sponsor of this podcast, Eric, this week is the School of Himbology. That's right. Make the brain smaller, the muscles bigger, baby. Uh, I would like to thank... Uh, mac and cheese imp uh, mac and cheese warehouse where you can get all of your mac and cheeses for those sweet sweet summer games this podcast is brought to you by steezing it up on the slopes that's right the only way to sharpen your skis is on more rails so get out there and use steez ease rail sharpeners love to hear it uh we could not have done this without the great support from Racing Snuggies, um, perfect for that sweet uh, slope style or half pipe concert, uh, half pipe competition. The only sportswear that keeps you stylish, comfortable, and uh, uh, Snuggies, buy them now. This podcast is still brought to you by performance enhancing dietary organics that's right get your performance enhancing dietary organics now for kids and last but not least homegrown hops is still here they are i believe a personal sponsor of jefferson steel flex's uh panded 12 ounce curls a uh, a true workout for a real athlete and lastly, this week, in a surprise twist, this podcast is not being brought to you by Large Rosé, but instead being brought to you by Petite Steel Flex Kombucha. All the protein, carbohydrate, and lipid powders in one palpable, tasteable kombucha. Mm -mm -mm. I heard he brews it straight out of that hybrid van he has. Wow, Eric, what a successful podcast. I mean, I think I think we did it. All right, you ready to sign this bad boy off? You bet your bottom dollar. Yeah, this dude, is I'm back. I uh, actually never really left. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, whoa, hit the, hit, the, hit the close button. <laughs> you stopped trying, man. I think you hacked me. It's the uncle arm. Uh -oh. The uncle arm is going off. <laughs> Alex, I got to get out of here, bros. Total mess. Oh, no. This has been a uh, Dewey Brothers podcast. Thank you for listening. I'm Alex. I'm Eric. And for the love of God, man. 
Just send it. Eat, 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 eat. Oh, crap, it's still the whole go on. still going. Uh, yeah, nah, bro. Like, we just, we just sand in it, bro. Oh, Clang! 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 Oh, no, no, no. Cut the tapes. Cut the tapes. I'm trying. They're too powerful. That's tight.